Recently, I've been asking all along that why do they say law? Where does the law come in? You know, is there something so bad that we're planning that we have to speak about law in law? Couldn't they have a better word like in love or something? You know, <laughs> so that's my father in love. You know, <laughs> imagine that's my mother in love. Wow, Allah Akbar. That would be amazing. Because you know, if you want to develop a slightly Indian accent, maybe you might say instead of Low, they instead of love, they say low. So maybe perhaps it could happen, but no, they someone answered recently. They told me, You see, you have a father, he becomes a father in law, you have a son, he becomes a son in law, you have a daughter, she becomes a daughter in law, you have a mother, she becomes a mother in law, you have a wife, what does she become? <laughs> she is the law. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. <laughs> anyway, as Muslimin, we don't face that problem, alhamdulillah. We don't face it at all. Because for, for us, it's in love, inshallah. We're in love, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless my father in love and my mother's in love, mashallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. This happens as well. قلت له طيب هل تذكر طوال التاريخ القديم أو اليوم أن عالما من علماء المسلمين تحول نصرانيا؟ Then I asked him that, okay, have you ever heard before or now, in the past or present, that one of the great scholars of Islam has left Islam and gone to another faith? He said no. Then I said why? قال لا فقلت لماذا؟ كيف ترجمة؟ Wallahi, thank you very much, Ya Akhi. Zakallah. Zakallah. You know, once I was sitting on an aircraft and I have a lot of time on an airplane. And I had an atheist sitting next to me and we were talking about faith and he said, you guys are very bad. The Muslims, I said, no, you get good and bad in every faith. He said, not Islam. I'm saying, what do you mean? He said, Islam, everyone's bad. You believe in Quran? I said, yeah, Quran, we believe in Quran. He says, this Quran, it's got bad things in it. I said, what? He says, you know, it says that anyone who's not a Muslim is going to hellfire. That is very bad. You guys are filled with hatred. You guys, I said, brother, you don't believe in hellfire. Why are you worried? <laughs> That's the irony. Atheist, he doesn't believe in the hereafter. And he's telling me we are bad because we believe everyone's going to hell. I said, by the way, the Christians believe the same, the Jews believe the same, the Hindus believe the same, and most other faiths believe the same. What about them? He said, no, but they don't have a Quran. I said, okay, this is a bigot. This is a person who really doesn't know. He is so uneducated. He hasn't mixed. I learned more about other faiths and inclinations and different types of people when I traveled the world. Subhanallah. Make mention of it. It's just a joke to show you that in Islam, we're also allowed to joke. For as long as the joke is not about any race, not about any religion, no matter what, we're not allowed to draw a cartoon about even the Hindus or the idols, nothing. Allah says, لا تسب الذين يدعون من دون الله فيسب الله عدوا بغيرهم Don't ever mock at anyone worshipping gods and deities besides Allah. Those who are far astray, don't mock about their beliefs, never. Because it will invite them to mock at your faith your expense without knowledge May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so for as long as no religion no race you know it's just a light joke May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and also we shouldn't be uh, people who pick on others and so on they say or it is said and this is a joke that there was a parrot that could speak and this joke before I start I must make mention it's not against women but it's against people who have pride in them Arrogance, haughtiness. According to us in Islam, even your surroundings can pick that up. Your surroundings bear witness for you or against you on the day of judgment. And these surroundings, amazingly, they pick up. They are either in harmony with you or against you. That's why you feel very claustrophobic sometimes and you feel very uneasy, maybe because your spirituality is not, for example, uh, at peace with the surroundings. If, if a spiritual person was to enter a nightclub, they wouldn't feel easy there. They would feel very, very, you know. And the same applies if a person who has absolutely no spirituality, 
half drunk wants to walk into the masjid, they wouldn't feel very easy there, although under certain conditions they might also experience the blessings of Allah there. So the parrot could speak and it was for sale at the pet shop with a little window, little window overseeing the pavement. And there was a lady walking with her friends, with making a loud noise with her shoes down the aisle, you know, lots of arrogance, Allah protect us. And the bird says, hey you, hey you. <laughs> so everybody looks, where did this come from? They turned around and says, oh, this comes from this bird. Wow, you can talk. He says, yes. The bird says, yes. The parrot says, yes. So the parrot looks at this woman who was absolutely arrogant and says, you're ugly. <laughs> Woo, that was bad. She was so embarrassed, very upset, naturally so. And she decided to walk away, you know, blurting a few words and gone. The following day she comes back, the same thing happens. Hey you, hey you. She says, oh no. So she looks there, she hadn't changed her ways. She's still the same, arrogance. And the parrot says, you're ugly. She decided, no, I'm going into this shop and I'm waiting for it to open and I want to take these guys to court. So she goes in and she starts tackling the owner. You know, this parrot, I want to sue it for defamation. I want to sue it for this and for that and what. And the guy tries to explain, look, you know, it's just a parrot and it won't happen. And you know this. And then he calls the parrot in and says, you know what, this woman, you don't you dare say you're ugly again. It's going to be a big problem, you see. It's going to be a big... So the parrot says, okay. <laughs> so the woman was very, very excited the following morning. Obviously, the parrot had undertaken not to say you're ugly again. Following morning, the woman walks down, even more arrogance. Why? She's convinced that this parrot is now dead meat. You know, dead meat if it says anything. So she called up all her friends and says, right, we're all walking down the aisle together today. Okay, that's fine, let's go. And she walks with lots of arrogance. She hadn't changed. All she needed to do is just calm down a little bit. And the parrot would have left her. And the parrot's looking very scared, you know, shaking, you know, sees her walking past, doesn't say anything. And then suddenly, as she crosses, the parrot says, hey you, hey you. She says, what? She looks back and says, what? The parrot says, you know. <laughs> so the moral of the story is, for as long as you don't leave arrogance, you're not going to solve the problem. It will stir, and people, even if they don't tell you that, they know it. If a parrot can know it, those around you know it. The Imam in the masjid said, you need to praise the cooking of your wife, just like I said now. So the man went home and he had this meal and he was looking at it and looking at his wife and smiling and all happy, mashallah, and excited and everything. And when he finished, he says, oh, it was awesome. And the wife says, what? I've been cooking for you for 21 years. You never said that. Today when the food came from the neighbor, you want to say it was awesome. So he says, oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't know. <laughs> there were these professors who were crossing the river in a boat with an old man who was the sailor. He was rowing away as they're sitting there. And one says, I'm a professor of biology. And the other one says, I'm a professor of geology. And the other one says, I'm a professor of this ology. And the other one says, I'm a professor of hematology. And the other one says, whatever else. And they all look at this man and says, what are you a professor of? He says, I didn't go to school. They say you have wasted your life. Did you hear what they said? You have wasted your life. All he's doing is he's busy rowing. He's rowing the boat. And they're all crossing the river. They're all professors in the ologies. So now, suddenly the waves come. When the waves come, what happens? The old man who's rowing, he looks at all these professors and he says, Have you learned swimology? <laughs> Do any one of you know how to swim? And they said, No. He says, Well, you have wasted your life. 
He says, I am a swimologist and I know divology, so I will dive into the poolology. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. The moral of that is, I won't end it, you can end it how you want. You can either make them drown or you can make them have survived somehow. But the moral of it is, look at the focus. That is how we operate in this world. We know every ology, but we don't know that Quranology. And you can call it Salahology, whatever you want to call it, call it. But do we pray? Do we know? Do we have the link with Allah? When the true waves come of death, will we be from amongst those who have survival kits so that we can live happily ever after? Subhanallah. Something comes to my mind. A man, his name was, his surname was Singh. Okay? His surname was Singh. It's a common surname. Singh. So, he was resting in a park. So, because when you rest on the bench in a park, what happens is you take up more than one space, you know. So, one person came to him and told him, are you relaxing? Now, he thought this man is asking me, is your name Relax and your surname Singh? You know, are you relaxing? He says, no, sir, I am Dilip Singh. <laughs> and here comes another man. He says, are you relaxing? Within a minute, another man, are you relaxing? He says, no, sir, I am Dilip Singh. And a, a third man, are you relaxing? He says, no, sir, I am Dilip Singh. So he decided, like I told you, no patience. He got up and he walked away. So he walked right to the other side of the park and he saw another man. He saw another man lying down. And he said, this might be the one. So he tells him, are you relaxing? He says, yes. He says, they're looking for you on the other side. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The impatience of man and lack of understanding. So we ask Allah to grant us a deeper understanding. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Every time I think of this, I actually laugh.